at the masjid are regularly, are, I regularly attend, there are a group of young brothers who have dedicated themselves to learning Islam from the Imam. He asks us both their teacher and spiritual mentor. They are very fortunate to be still young and have such a person to guide them. For I never had such a person in my life as a Muslim, and now I am old and ill. You are not, you are still young. <laughs> in addition, I did not embrace Islam until I was 28 years old, and I had to start with knowing nothing. Now, these 23 years later, I know less than nothing, which is utterly shameful. I can cram very little into this thick skull of mine and lack the discipline needed to become a student and devotee. La ilaha illallah. I inwardly envy these brothers as they have access to something I never did. But Allah is Kareem. The Imam is kind to me and is well aware of my limitations. But I will never fully benefit from what he has to offer. The best I can hope for are a few crumbs that fall from the table from which other people feast. If you are young, there is still time for you, so don't waste it. And this from Ibn Mas'ud who said that Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, There is to be no envy except with regard to two, a man whom Allah has given wealth which he strives to spend righteously, and a man to whom Allah has given the wisdom, the Quran, and he acts according to it and teaches it to others. Barakallahu feekum. This is, uh, it was forwarded to me that uh, S.N. Smith, and I always, who is this N. N. S. N. Smith? I only knew that he was shown like two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to benefit fully from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is catering to us, inshallah, and these uh, 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 generous banquets that he is, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, generously spreading in front of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the tawfiq to fully benefit from, uh, from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering us. Ameen, arham, arahameen, ya rabbal alameen. Naam. Merit of congregational prayer. Bismillah. Sidi Mahdi. Give to Sidi Shaman. I can take it. Do you need to um, uh, sit, sit. He will put it for me. Bismillah. Merit of congregational prayer. Jama'ah. The Prophet وسلم, said, The merit of congregational prayer surpasses that of individual prayer by 27 degrees. According to Abu Huraira, the Prophet وسلم, once noticed that certain people were missing from the congregation. He said, I considered appointing someone else to lead the prayer while I went out to show my disapproval of those abstinences by burning down their houses. According to another version, he added, any one of them would have joined the congregation if he had expected to get a marrow bone or a couple of trotters. According to Uthman, may Allah be pleased with him, the Blessed Prophet وسلم, said, to perform the, the late prayer, Aisha, in congregation is equivalent to spending half the night in vigil, while to perform the dawn prayer, Fajr, in congregation is like keeping vigil throughout the night. The Prophet وسلم, also said to perform the prayer in congregation is to fill one's throat with worship. Allah. Sayyid ibn al-Musayyid said, in all of 23 years, the call to prayer has always found me in the mosque. Allah. Muhammad ibn Wasi said, <clears throat> only three things do I wish for in this world, a brother to set me straight if I get crooked, a livelihood for which I do not have to beg, and a congregational prayer in which I am relieved of absent-mindedness and which is recorded in my favor. Hatim al-Asam. 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 Means the deaf. Oh, okay. Mm. I was once too late for congregational prayer, and, and Abu Ishaq al-Bukhari was the one to commiserate with me. Had was I the only one, was the only one to commiserate with me. Uh. 
Had I lost a son, more than 10,000 would have offered me their condolences. For people find religious misfortune easy to bear than worldly calamity. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, said, If a man hears the crier, Muaddin, and does not respond, he does not wish for good, and no good is to be expected of him. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Better for a human being to have his ear filled with molten lead than to hear the call and fail to respond. It is, it is related that Maimun ibn Mihram once came to the mosque only to be told that the people had all left. He quoted from the Quran, surely we belong to Allah and to him we are surely returning. Then said, truly the value of this prayer is dearer to me than the governorship of Iraq. Said the Prophet wasallam, if a man performs his prayers in congregation for 40 days, never arriving after the Allahu Akbar of consecration, Allah will grant him two ab absolutions, absolutions from the hypocrisy and absolutions from hellfire. It is said that on the day of resurrection, a group of people will be assembled, their faces like shining stars, the angels will ask him, how did you conduct yourselves in life? To this they will reply, on hearing the call to prayer, we used to set about our ablutions, letting nothing else distract us. Another group will then be assembled, their faces like radiant moons. In answer to the same question, they will say, we used to make our ablutions ahead of time. Hmm. The next group to be assembled will have faces like the sun. Hmm. They will say, we used to hear the call to prayer inside Instant. the mosque. Allah Akbar. It is related that, er, that early believers used to commiserate with oh. themselves for three days if they missed the first Allahu Akbar and for a whole week if they missed the congregational prayer altogether. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. This is the legacy. Alhamdulillah for this for this legacy that continued from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu through the time of companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi through the times of Tabi'een. We are on the page twenty four. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, 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 for this. And when we read texts, we need to read all of them together. And when you read a book, before stopping at a hadith, read the whole chapter from the beginning to the end and be patient. Even though you might not you might get surprised or you, may, you might get shocked or you might get confused with the language of one of them. Keep reading to the end. Keep reading to the end and get the understanding. So this is telling us about what? The philosophy of all these ahadith together. It is the merit of and the importance and the crucial importance of answering the call. al istijaba li Answering the call of truth, answering the call of haq. And you find some ahadith in the targheeb, and some others are in the targheeb. So some ahadith are in the targheeb, that means they are encouraging to encourage us to have raghba, to desire to answer the call. And some other ahadith are in what we call the targheeb to make us have rahba, to make us think twice, basically, before deciding to not answer the call or postponing answering the call. Alaykum as Rahaban wa rahaba. The believers, they, 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 they seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khawfan wa tama'a, rahaban wa rahaba. Khawfan out of fear from, of, of, from loss. Ya khafun. They fear that they lose that connection that they have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And tama'a and, 
and, and they have that tama, they have that hope, they have that uh, uh, aspiration that their connection with God will increase. هذا خوفا وطمعا رغبا ورهبا رغبا is a desire they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with desire with that desire to really get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and رهبا with awe and رهبا means also uh, same like خوفا this رهبا that uh, so there is desire but also awe in the same time because you might have you might have a, a, a desire in a relationship. You might have love and desire in a relationship, but you don't have rahaba. So you start taking it for granted. Uh, so it has to be rahaba and rahaba. Uh, and if you have khawf and you do not have tama'a, that khawf will be blocking you. That fear will be, they have to be both. And that's the, that's the divine love. That's the divine love. To, to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to have khawfan wa tama'a, is to have raghaban wa rahaba. So some ahadith are in the context of targheeb, some other ahadith are in the context of, of targheeb. There is a book, uh, jama' of ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some of them are sahih, some of them are hasan, alaykum salam. Some of them are da'if. That uh, al-allama, al-mundhiri, uh, has, has gathered, has put together in, in, in a very famous book, uh, very beautiful literature to read called At Targheeb wa Targheeb. Kitab wa Targheeb wa Targheeb. Kitab wa Targheeb wa Targheeb. And you find in every, in every uh, chapter, uh, for example, the ahadith that gives you more desire, more raghba to do something good, and the ahadith that gives you Targheeb, that makes you Targheeb from doing from not doing that or from doing something. Uh, uh, mm. So the ahadith of tarheeb are not ahadith of threatening. The ahadith of tarheeb are not ahadith of threatening, are ahadith to create in the heart of the believer that feeling of you'll be missing out. You'll be missing out if you do not do that. And also that you are putting your relationship and your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at risk. These are the ahadith of Tarheeb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us in Tarheeb and Tarheeb. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has spoken in Tarheeb and Tarheeb. And if you, don't, if you want to talk to any person you care for and you love, you will give him Tarheeb and Tarheeb. You cannot only use the Tarheeb. You cannot only use the targheeb. You cannot only tell your son and educate your son whom you love and you want him to become a very good man. You cannot only use, if you do this, you will get this. If you do this, you will get this. If you do this, you, you will get this. He will be handicapped. Part of his brain, half of his brain won't be, won't be working in that way. He has to understand, if you do not this, if you do not do this, you won't get this. Or you would get that. Which is, he has to understand, to be responsible, to be mas'ul, uh, to be mature, to be responsible. Mm. But tarheeb is not threatening. Tarheeb is not threatening. Mm. So in the, uh, let us start with the ahadith of tarheeb first, if you, if, you, if you allow me. I will just change the order of the ahadith. Labayk. Targheeb, uh, and the root of it is Raghaba, Raghaba, or Raghiba, Raghiba, means to desire. Uh, Targheeb is to make someone desire and aspire, okay? To push someone to desire and aspire, to stir the desire and aspiration in the heart of someone, that's Targheeb. It's a masdar, ala wazan taf'il. Uh, from the root, from the verb raghaba, and the verb raghaba, ala wazan fa'ala, is fa'l ruba'i, three letters, ala wazan fa'ala, and the root of it is raghiba. 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 
غاروبا means sunset means to set غاروبا means to 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 go to leave راغبا ممكن ترغيب is the مصدر is the is the is the مشتق is the is the noun that we take from the root from the verb رغبا it means to make someone to stir the desire and the aspiration in the heart of someone ترهيب ترهيب is to stir the رهب is to stir the rahab in the heart of someone. And these are two. Tarheeb also is a masdar. Mushtaq. Is a noun. Uh, that we. Uh, that was created from the verb. Rahaba. Rahaba. Ra. Ha. With shadda. With fatha. Rahaba. It's not rahaba. It's rahaba. And it is actually the opposite of rahaba. Hmm. Because rahaba is to marhaba, marhaba, marhaba. Is to remove the all. Why, why do we say marhaba to people when they come to us? To remove that, uh, to break the ice. Literally. To break the ice. Because they come with, with <coughs> ice. It's not ice of coldness. It's eyes of. Politeness and protocol. Huh? Politeness and protocol and uh, your status and your maqam. You are my teacher and, and you are a doctor so and so or uh, your place. And I'm telling marhaba. Marhaba means remove all the protocols. That's what marhaba means. Uh, marhaba means remove all the protocols and feel, feel, feel at home and feel at, uh, feel comfortable. Feel murahabbik. There is no need for rahab. Uh, but, but if you want to meet your enemy, you tell him marhaba, not marhaba. So, <laughs> so if someone who does not know the difference between marhaba and marhaba. <laughs> so if someone, from the subcontinent or whatever, and he wants to speak marhaba and say, marhaba! <laughs> oh, Lord, 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 I don't want that. Marhaba means uh, stay there. <laughs> don't come close. I'm sending my soldier of Rahab to you. You have to be, I'm, 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 I'm striking you with awe. Huh? Uh, I want you to have Rahab. I want you to have Rahba, not Rahba. Huh? To know your place and stay there. Marhaba. Mm. Uh, we do tarheeb to, to stir something in the heart of the, of the human. Mm. And tarheeb and tarheeb and tarheeb. Mm. Mm. Raghaba, rahaba, rahaba. Uh, are actually soldiers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Junood, min junood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yuharrak biha qulub man yasha' min ibadah. Junood, tatafa'al ma'aha al-qulub salima These are soldiers that the sound hearts uh, know how to deal with uh, sound heart and when we uh, sound heart not com not complex not muakkad heart the sound heart uh, not a corrupted heart the sound heart the sound heart understands like a sound uh, like a sound taste when I give you something salty this is salty when I give you something sweet this is sweet. And you know how to react to the salt and to the sweet. And there is, there is beauty in both. You cannot keep all your life eating sweet things. It won't be sweet anymore. And you can, I mean, we use vinegar from time to time. We use salt. To appreciate this, the, 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 the taste of the, of the food. Actually, salt doesn't add anything. It just makes, uh, brings the, the, the secret. It's called the, it's called the asr in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in our language. We do not call salt salt. We call, we call it asr, hmm? the secret. Asr. The, all the spice, we call it asr. Asr. Hmm. Why? Because it, uh, brings out the it brings out the flavor. And, and good uh, cuisine, 
good, good cooks, they only use, use salt and pepper with meat and lemon and vinegar. These are the things. You do not uh, b bury the meat with all respect to, to, to your hungry stomachs and, 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 to, and, and, and to our uh, rich cooking. My taste with meat is honestly nothing. Salt and pepper, lemon, or vinegar. That's it. Do not bury with butter, chicken, butter, this, food, that, halas. It's not meat anymore. What's the difference? You are eating potato, or if you put, uh, if you put tofu, or it's the same. It's just something. It's just something. If you put like some anything digestible, it's the same taste. Why? Wallahu a'lam, yani, that's the taste. <laughs> huh? um, because the, the meat has its secret, has its own flavor. Fish has its own flavor, has its own. You don't, you don't kill it with, uh, uh, you don't with kill curry. it huh? <laughs> with curries and with, 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 with lots of uh, uh, spices. Uh, I didn't even know there was such a thing as any, anything else other than salt and pepper until I was like 29 years old. <laughs> How did it happen? <laughs> How did it happen? And then I met all these Muslims that had all this uh, <laughs> <laughs> How did it happen? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, the sir, hmm? you need, you cannot eat sweet all the time, you cannot eat, eat salty all the time, you need that. And both of them, they have their beauty. And the sound tongue is what? approves of and, and, and tastes the salty and identifies and also approves of and accepts the salty as well as the and knows how to deal with them. Same thing, the sound heart is the heart that knows how to deal with Jalal and Jamal. Is the heart that knows how to deal with Tarheeb and Targheeb. If someone can only thrive with Targheeb, and when we tell him, Fegafla, watch out. Khalas goes and sleep like a baby and doesn't know how to do anything. And Khalas, is, that means he needs to be trained. He needs to be trained how to appreciate more the Tarheeb messages. Because these are what we said, these are soldiers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Targheeb wa Targheeb. Yahdi biha quluba man shaa min ibadah. Aw yatatafa'al ma'a al quluba salima. The sound hearts, they know how to react to this. The sound heart, Sidi Sheikh Abdul Qasim, rahmatullah alayhi, he says, you have to, when, 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 Sidi, my master, amongst my students, my master, amongst my students, the one when I look at him, when I look to him like this, he says like this. He's my master. <laughs> Amongst my students, the one when I look at when I look at him like this, he says like this. Because ah, huh? and that's the art of living. That's the art of answering. We are talking about answering the call. Both targhib and targhib are, are calls. Are soldiers calling us. And there is an art how to answer, how to react to the Targheeb and how to react to the Targheeb. How to react to the Jalal, how to react to the Jamal. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spreads the carpets of Jamal to you, do not create a mess on top of that. Still keep, keep, uh, enjoy, inhale that Jamal to the fullest, live that moment of Jamal to the fullest, Fill your heart with <coughs> it. But do not. Uh, do not overstep the. The boundary. Do not create a mess with the jala with the jamal. Otherwise, it will become jalal. Try to. Uh, I remember. I was with 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 with. Uh, I remember it very well. I was a uh, uh, four four and a half. But I remember it very well. It was four and a half or five maximum. Four and a half before I went to school. I went to school at five. So four and a half. 
So, uh, so uh, I was playing with my uncle, the uncle of my, uh, the uncle of my mother. He was the uncle of my mother. The uncle of my mother, and his name was, uh, was Saleh. And I was, Rahmatullah uh, uh, he's still living. But I was playing with him, and he was playing with me, like, uh, and okay, in the beginning, it was a moment of Basr Jamal. And here's someone who was angry all the time, yelling at everyone else. He's, 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 he's a, he's, he manages a farm, and he's really, يعني, he, 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 oh, mashallah. And his, ma, his mother is from Malta. He's like Italian short like this, and like all these Italians, like really. So with the, he has that Italian personality, very, very Maltan, like Sicilian Italian personality, ajib. Anyways, but all of a sudden he's smiling to me and laughing to me and taking me like this and playing with me and I'm so happy. What a moment of Jamal, what a moment. Okay, and I started pulling his ears. Okay, in the beginning a bit, okay, it was good. And he wasn't complaining or anything. And I remember in that moment of Jamal, I just took my hand and puff. <laughs> <laughs> And gave him a good slap on the face. <laughs> and he did not say anything, but all that Jamal. I remember the feeling of anxiety that I felt after that. And the feeling of... You understand what I'm talking about? All is lost. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you live moments like that. Be careful to give a slap at my hand. With your teacher, with that, uh, yeah, خلاص هني. بسم الله, we laugh, etc. But you keep some. <laughs> when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala shrinks the carpet or serves you the cup of jalal, also there is a way how to deal, how to how to drink it, how to savor it. You don't say, <coughs> no. If you react to the jalal with jalal, then you created the jidal. You created what we call the jidal, and you created your own loss. Because j the jalal in itself is not a threat. The jalal in itself is not, is not a hatred. The jalal in itself is something good. It is meant to stir something. The way you react to it is, is what decides it. Jidal is, a, uh, you know Jidal when I tell you, do something. Oh, actually, I meant to do something else. Why didn't you? Uh, uh, because. Uh, huh? Conflict. You create confusion for yourself, you create conflict for yourself, and then, and then you lose that beauty of Jalal. Because Jalal literally comes from Jalala. Jallala means to put a cloak, means to make something big. And it comes from Jalala, the root is Jalala. Jalala means to make something sound big. It's, it's to make it sound big. Or to, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to emphasize. Jalal is to emphasize. It's to emphasize, to make that small mistake that you see it small. وَتَحْسَبُنَهُ هَيْنَا وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ You think it is a Trivial. It's عظيم عند الله. It's something, uh, that's the Jalal. The Jalal is that language, so the, the people who have uh, sound taste, they know how, ah, mashallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to emphasize that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to. Mm -hmm. So when the cup of Jalal is served to you, you have to taste, you have also to inhale it with a humility. Like this. Yes. To the point, one of the Salihin says, if on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya Abd al -su! I will tell him, Labbaik. Oh, evil servant. On the day, he said, if he calls me, because he, he gave a nasiha to his student in, uh, in public, and that student 
for three days he was absent. And after that, the fourth day, the other students, they played their role with him. They said, what, you lose that opportunity. He's a good teacher. He loves you. He's, what, what, what's the big deal? He, he, yelled, he yelled at me at, in public. He yelled at me in public. Had it been in, in privacy, it would have been different. And he went after that to his student, to his teacher. And had it been in private, it would have been different. They would have received it better. I said, yes, you're right. But he told for me, if in the day of judgment, all the khala'aq are gathered, and my Lord will tell me, Ya Abd al O evil servant, I will tell him, Labbaik. He said, for us, there is no public or privacy. Our privacy is public, and our public is private. استوى عندنا العلن السر والعلن قال لا يصدق المريد لا يصبح المريد مريدا إلا إلا إذا استوى عنده سر والعلانية خلاص private or public whatever all what we are looking for is to be corrected على كل حال the jalal we do not receive to We receive it like this. We receive it with submission. We receive it with Islam. We receive it with Taslim. وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا You get defeated. Don't say, أَنَّا هَذَا How come? Aren't we the Muslims? Aren't we the believers? إِنَّ اللَّهِ وَإِنَّ لَهِ رَجْعُونَ كُلُّ مِنْ عَنْدِ اللَّهِ Because you say, Anna hadha, Anna hadha, who been and the Anfusikum? You brought it to yourself, Anna hadha. <laughs> had you respected the Jamal, had you dealt beautifully with the Jamal, the Jalal wouldn't have come. Ala kulli hal, these are two soldiers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why am I using this? Because many of these ahadith that we are going to, to study, many of people they try to no, why God is talking like that? How I cannot you see the Prophet ﷺ going and burning the homes of people just because they are missing the prayer? And, and some of them insisted to make these ahadith da'if so to get rid of them? That's not the way. That's not the way. That's not the way. Let us, let us, let us forget about da'if and sahih for a while because it is in the targheeb and tarheeb. And in the targheeb and tarheeb, fada'il al-a'mal, Sahih and da'if, do not apply. Do not apply. We only avoid the mawdu'ah. And we do not avoid the text of the mawdu'ah, but we avoid to attribute a mawdu'ah hadith to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we know it is mawdu'ah and there is no single scholar of the, scho uh, the scholars of a hadith who found a sanad for it, we, say, we can say some of the salihin have said or it was said or it was related. Because some ahadith, the sanad is mawdu'ah, they were attributed wrongly to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but the matin of them is, is so sound. It's a piece of wisdom, it's a jewel. So the hadith of Targheeb, for example, and so how, how beautiful it said, ah, this is, it is said, uh, that's why he said, it is said. It is said. This is a hadith. Uh, this is a hadith. Da'if or mawdu'a. We have no sanad for it. We have no strong sanad for it. But the description is, 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 so, is so accurate. It's so clear. Listen. Hmm. The day of resurrection, a group of people will be assembled. Their faces like shining stars. The angels will ask them, How did you conduct yourselves in life? To this they will reply, On hearing the call to Salat, we used to, page 25, we used to set about our ablutions, letting nothing else distract us. 
So these people, they are in, uh, in their businesses or in their uh, homes. As soon as they hear Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, as soon as they hear the Adhan, huh? they? Respond. they respond to the Adhan. Check who is there. And if the outside door is, no, someone has closed the door. And check if the outside door is, is open or closed. As, as soon as, خلاص, one person is doing it, alhamdulillah. As soon as they hear the call, they do their ablutions and they do not let anything else distract them. So these people, they will come the day of resurrection, their faces are like stars. And then the other ones, another group, their faces will be, some of their faces like radiant moons. In answer to the same question, they will say, we used to make our ablutions ahead of time. Ah, they used to anticipate the call. Five minutes before the Adhan or ten minutes before the Adhan, they make their ablutions. As soon as they hear the Adhan, they start walking to the masjid. Huh? Without delay. Without delay. Are, uh, these are anticipating the call. Now the third group, their faces are radiant like suns. Nujum, Akmar, Shumus. Now these ones, the light of their face are like Kashams. To the same question they will answer. We used to be at the masjid when the Adhan was called. We used to hear the call to prayer inside the masjid, in, inside the masjid. Those people, they would anticipate the call and answer the call ahead of time. And this is a hadith of ma'rifah. If it is not a hadith, it would be a saying of one of the ulama, Tasturi or, uh, or, or Al-Jilani or, or Mawlana Ali, Imam Ali Zain Al-Abdin or Ja'far Sadiq or one of these. Imams of the of the ilm of the of the qalb because it is very it is very or maybe it was marfu'a maybe it is Sayyidina Allah Mas'ud who said it or something like that I'm not sure we can go and find the sanad but the meaning so those who answer the call without delay are like this are like stars those who answer the call who anticipate the call and answer the call without delay are like moons those who anticipate the call and answer the call before the call are like sons. Allahu Akbar. And these are taraqqiyat fi nur fi tanawur. These are the madarij of salikin fi sabil nur. These are the steps or the stations, different stations of enlightenment. So the first one is enlightened like a star. Brilliant like a star, because it doesn't delay the answer. The other one is brilliant like a moon, because he anticipates the call and is ready to answer and gets ready to answer. The third one is brilliant like a sun, because he anticipates the call and answers the call before he was called even. Allah. Allahu Akbar. And this is, this is a level. This is a level. And there is, you remember in the first session we said, Man amila bima ya'lam awrath Allahu ilma ma lam ya'lam. The one who acts upon the knowledge he has, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the knowledge that he doesn't have. And the one who answers the call he hears, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the tawfiq to answer the call that he does not hear. We watched a movie talking about a uh, 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 a boy of a, uh, of a carpenter. Huh? A boy of a carpenter? You can say, carpenter's boy? You know what's boy? 
Okay. It's not his child, his... Uh, his, 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 his apprentice. Huh? Apprentice. Apprentice. Mm. apprentice of a carpenter. But his boy, really, they use, you know, it's not like today they go and get a degree and they open their... You know, they would spend 8, 10, 12, 20, 25 years. Like Sayyidina Yusuf al Najjar, Joseph the carpenter. He was the boy of Sayyidina Zakaria. He was the apprentice of Sayyidina Zakaria. Yusuf al Najjar, the one who raised Sayyidina Isa. The one who took care of Sayyidina Isa when all Al Imran were killed. And he was the last to remain out of the Jacobians. Sayyidina Yusuf al Najjar. He's the one who took, who helped Sayyidina Maryam to, to escape to Egypt. And he's the one who raised Sayyidina Isa. And taught him to become a carpenter. <laughs> Yusuf al Najjar, the saint Joseph al Najjar, the carpenter. Yeah. So he was the apprentice of Sayyidina Zakaria, alayhi salam. He was a carpenter. And he lived with him his whole life. The apprentice of the carpenter, he was asked, and this is an interview, I will find it for you. And he was asked, he, he, he to, they told him, can you describe the stages of your uh, apprenticy, apprentice. apprenticeship, apprenticeship, He said, the first day, <coughs> we were five of us. Our mothers put us it was the summer holiday, and five of us were not good students, and we were, uh, his, it was in Argentina, and we were, uh, we were um, uh, kicked out of the school. Khalas. We were called, so our mothers, and we were orphans, our mothers decided to, we have to, an alternative. They took us to the uncle uh, Tom or something, the carpenter. He said, out of five, I was the only one kept. And he was asked why. He, well, he said, because as soon I was the one, as soon as he asks for something, I get it to him. The others, one of them, when he asks for something, He's playing, he doesn't even hear what he's saying. The other one, when he asks for something, he was asleep, he doesn't even hear. The other one, he hears, but he just wants one of us to take the, the, the because it is a heavy thing, it is a heavy, uh, it is a heavy uh, task, or it is a heavy thing, or it is a dirty job. He, he just fait semblant, il, uh, 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 uh? <laughs> he pretends that he did not hear, so, so someone else will do the job for him. Mm -hmm. the, fourth, uh, the fourth one was, was someone who uh, answers the call with delay after asking, which one? Where? How? He said these four ones were eliminated. I was the only one selected. Why? Because I used to be, I was the only one who answers the call as soon as is made. I was the only one when he says, bring that thing, khalas. I will just go to that thing and bring it. That's it. And I wouldn't mind, huh? subhanAllah, if it is the head, I wouldn't mind if others were doing or working or not working or whatever. All of them are playing on their computers. I'm the only one washing dishes. You know what? Be the man. Number two, he said, few months later, I started anticipating what, his, what, he, will, what he was going to ask for. Khalas now. We understood the purpose, we understood what we are working on a project of a chair or of a table. Khalas, now I'm, now I'm anticipating it. He said, a few months later, and khalas, I would have the nail in my hand. Before he asks for it, 
he doesn't even ask. He stopped asking for things because, because it is there in front of him. The nail, the thing, everything he needs, he never asked. He said, Lam ila su'al. And that was Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik. Some people, they don't understand the hadith about Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik. Actually, the hadith about Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik is to be understood both ways. You know, I served Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he never told me for something. Why did you put it there? Or why you did not put it there? The way we want, our egos want to understand that hadith. Oh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to accept anything, anyhow. Okay. That's not tolerance. That would be abuse to this boy. That would be abuse to this boy. If you do not teach someone what to do, and the correct way of doing things, you are abusing him. Sayyidina Anas is telling you, under the line, how he was with Rasulullah And in another hadith, I did not make him need to ask for anything for the last 10 years, for the last 5 years. He never needed to ask where is this, what? It's there. It's ready. It's ready. When we went to Tareem and we saw them, it's ready. He never needs to worry about, okay, get the car ready or never. He never. Or get the keys ready. Or he's just he's sitting there and just, just with the, like this, we are going to Janazah now. Actually, the driver is always listening to the classes with, 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 his, uh, with his radio, with his, uh, mm -hmm. and he's always ready. And Dar al-Mustafa has, has three doors, three exit doors. So, and Habib might exit from this door, or that door, or that door, depending on the, which city he's going to. Mm -hmm. Like, smooth like that. We never left with Habib and we did not find the car exactly at the spot. The door open, the chair ready, everything working. All what he needs is there. And that's really from the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, uh, and that's really something beautiful to witness. And this is the secret of answering the call. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the same thing. You start acting upon the knowledge that you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the knowledge that you do not have. You start practicing what you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start giving you what you do not know. Have that eagerness, that readiness, you want, that desire to answer the call, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you grow in this, uh, in this process of answering the call. Uh, in this enlightenment. For, Start as a, st as a star, you will become a moon, you will become a sun. Um, I will end with one hadith. Go back to the hadith number one. The Prophet sallallahu says, mm. The merit of congregational prayer surpasses that of individual prayer by 27 degrees. And this is not, a, this is not any number when he says 27, one of the, one of the uh, salihin, he missed the, he missed the congre congregational prayer. So he decided to pray that very prayer 27 times. So he saw in his dream mm, that they were on horse, they, they were like horsemen, they were on horses, riding horses. 
and the people of the who were who were at the congregation prayer, they were like ahead of him, and he was running. He was forcing his, huh? he was pushing his horse and running, and he would only see them like, he would only see the dust behind them. That's after making the prayer 27 times. So it's not about, it's not about the, ac the action itself. It's about the barakah of the jama'ah, it's about, huh? because it's about making, keeping that mosque alive, it's, it's about the merits of the congregation prayer. Huh? Uh, today, uh, uh, let alone, uh, or how about during the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And the way we read the second hadith, the hadith of Abu Huraira, that many people say, oh no, it is da'if, and they insisted to make it da'if. Uh, no, this is it. We cannot see Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing it, and it's a myth, and why would he burn the houses of people? He was so tolerant. He's not telling you that I'm going to burn them. It's a bayan in Arabic. It's a balaghi way to say in Arabic that you are burning my heart. He did not say, I will next time. He said, يعني, It's like, it, it's, it's, to, it's, to the, it's to express his feeling of sorrow and regret for these people of his ummah who would uh, let go of these golden opportunities like that. He said, Wallahi, what's left really? يعني, had, they, had they realized the loss had they realized the loss that they are incurring huh? through this, they wouldn't have cared. It would have been easier, much easier for them to bear. Huh? To have their homes burned out. That's exactly, that's what, that's what the hadith was saying. Ça aurait été plus facile pour eux de voir leur maison brûler que d'avoir raté. Si, 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 hein? Uh, if, if only they know. Hein? Ah, had, uh, had they known, had they only known. Huh? Huh? Had they only known? Or? Had they only known what they were missing? Had they only known what they were missing? They would have preferred having their houses burned, burned down huh? to, to missing or then missing the prayer. Missing the prayer with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's how we should read the hadith. That's the way we should read the hadith. It's in a sorrow tone, in a regret tone, in a sor sorrowful. Sorrowful tone, it's not angry tone. I would go and burn their houses next time because, because as if I, he needs them to be there. No. My fool. The translation is not the best. It said, Hamamtu. Uh, 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 so it's not to show, uh, I want to show my disapproval. I, it's not, I want to show, yeah, my disapproval and my sorrow to them. And so, the, it cannot be translated to English. The hadith cannot be translated to English because you can make like a big uh, statement in Arabic. What we want to convey is not the action, it's like the... Subtext. It's an image. It's a... Uh, the subtext. The, the subtext. Subtext. Text. The subtext. Yeah, between the, the lines. Uh, the subtext between the lines. Okay? The, the, the hal, the, the, the hal of the, 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 the thing. Okay? Uh, like when you say, Thakilatka ummuk. You cannot, uh, you cannot translate it, may your mother be bereaved of you. <laughs> you find it like, may your mother be bereaved of you, ya ma'ala. It's not, it's not, that it, we don't have something like that in English. We do not have that expression, it should never be translated as such. Thakilat ka ummuk, ya ma'ala. And doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't even convey the same, uh, the, the same emotion. It's, it's a funny statement, thakilat ka ummuk. It's not a, So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to convey the gravity the, uh, of the thing. Mm. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yarzuqana wa iyaakum tawfiq. We end with this hadith when Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu, he says, the one who prayers Aisha uh, in congregation is equivalent to spending half of the night, half the night in vigil, while perform the, the fajr in congregation is like keeping vigil throughout the night. Uh, so, uh, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, this is the month of Ramadan, and uh, at least for those who cannot uh, pray tarawih, <coughs> they can pray and they can come and pray Aisha, uh, and leave to their homes at peace with no, uh, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, and come back and pray fajr, hadr, and they will have, inshallah, the reward of, uh, and this, this ahadith too is not telling you, so don't pray night vigil. This hadith is not telling you don't pray night vigil or just do this enough and you are good. No. This hadith is telling you if you are in a context of necessity, uh, this hadith we have to, to see it in, in its context. It was said to, to people who were uh, uh, working hard, to women who were breastfeeding, to, you know. If you do this as if you did that, if you do this as if you did that, people who have an old age, etc. Hakada. In, in, it's, it's about the context. Allahumma faqihna fi dinina wa alimna ta'wil wa salli wa sallam wa barak ala sallam Muhammad wa ala ahli ashabu tabi na tahirin Allahumma ya rabbi zidna min al-hirs al-lazhi tanfa'u bihi ibadaka al-mu'minin wa tahdi bihi quluba ibadaka al-muttaqin Allahumma zidna min al-hirs ala al-khayrat ya arhamu rahamin ya rabbil alameen Allah give us more eagerness for, 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 for good ya arhamu rahamin ya rabbil alameen and give us more eagerness for, for, for high to attain high stations ya arhamu rahamin ya rabbil alameen and give us more uh, more, 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 more eagerness and greed uh, to, 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 uh, for your gifts, Ya Arham Ar Rahmin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa salli wa sallam wa barak ala sallam wa ala wa sahabu tabi al-tahirin. Wallah, Ya Arham Ar Rahmin, Allahumma, give us sound hearts which, uh, that, that know how to deal with your jamal and your jalal, Ya Arham Ar Rahmin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa salli wa sallam wa barak ala sallam wa ala sallam wa sahabu tabi al-tahirin. Give us, Ya Arham Ar Rahmin, sound inner taste. Give us the sound inner taste. Give us the sound inner taste. Ya Arham Ar Rahmin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. وبارك في قواتنا ظاهرها وباطنها and put بركة in all the forces that you give us the 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 exoteric forces and the esoteric forces يا أرحم الراحمين رب العالمين the exoteric taste and the esoteric taste صلى الله وسلم بارك الله حمد على آله وصحبه طيبين طاهرين الفاتحة ربنا انفعنا بما علمتنا رب علمنا الذي ينفعنا رب فقهنا وفقه أهلنا وقرابات لنا في ديننا مع أهل القدر أنثى وذكر رب وفقنا وفقهم لما ترتضي قولا وفعلا كرما وارزق الكل حلالا دائما وأخلا أتقيا علما نحظى بالخير ونكفى كل شر ربنا واصلح لنا كل الشؤون وأقر بالرضا منك العيون واقض عنا ربنا كل الديون قبل أن تأتينا رسل المنون واغفر استر أنت أكرم من ستر وصلاة الله تغشى المصطفى من إلى الحق دعانا والوفاء بكتاب فيه للناس شفاء وعلى الآل الكرام الشرفاء وعلى الصحب المصابيح الغرر اللهم اهدنا بهداك ولا تولنا وليا سواك ولا تجعلنا ممن خالف أمرك وعصاك واجعلنا ممن يسارع في رضاك وصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله والحمد لله رب العالمين في كل حظنا بدا عدد خلقه يا ربنا اعترفنا بأننا اقترفنا وأننا أسرفنا على لظى أشرفنا فاتب علينا توبا تغسل لكل حوبا فاتب علينا توبا تغسل لكل حوبا واستر لنا العورات وآمن الروعات واغفر لوالدينا ربي ومولودينا والأهل والإخوان 
وسائر الخلان وكل ذي محبة أو جيرة أو صحبة والمسلمين أجمع آمين ربي اسمع فضلا وجودا منا لا باكتساب منا بالمصطفى الرسول نحظى بكل سول بالمصطفى الرسول نحظى بكل سول بالمصطفى الرسول نحظى بكل صلي وسلم ربي عليه عد الحب وآله والصحب عداد طش السحب والحمد للإله في البدء والتناهي حمدا كثيرا دائم ما هبت النسائم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين فاتحة